I've found red flags in some of the most popular stocks like Microsoft and Intel, hidden warning signs in the financial statements of stocks like Meta Platforms, Verizon, and even Tesla that you need to see. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hulk here with what could be one of the most important investing videos you watch. Not just because I'm gonna point out those financial red flags in top stocks held in almost everyone's portfolios, but because what I'm gonna show you is gonna help you spot these warning signs in any stock. After this video, you will know more about stock analysis than nine in 10 investors out there. I'll explain each warning sign, how to find it, and give you an example from one or two top stocks in the market. And let's start with Goodwill, more than 35% of assets. This one always follows those big bull markets and can lead to single day stock losses of 30 and 40%. For example, when Teladoc Health took a $10 billion write down of its Livongo acquisition last year, the stock plunged 40% in one day. You see, when one company buys another, it almost always pays more than the current market price. When Teladoc agreed to pay that $18.5 billion for Livongo Health App, it paid 15 billion more than the startup's then assessed valuation. Now, of course, when stocks are surging and the economy is humming, nobody seems to care how much one company pays for another. It's, it's all gonna be worth it in that growth, right? So in the accounting for that acquisition, the target company's assets and liabilities get added to the buyer's balance sheet. But then that extra money paid, that, that premium has to go somewhere. So it's added to what's called goodwill assets. Basically, the company is saying, yes, we paid way more than the market value of the assets for that other company, but the brand and other intangible factors in that acquisition have value. So we're gonna stick it all in this catch-all account. Teladoc is saying here, it can't measure the actual assets of Livongo, but they're worth $13 billion plus here in 2020. Of course, the problem is when those acquisitions don't go as planned, when that growth just doesn't justify it. On accounting regulations, the company has to come clean and say, whoops, we messed up. That company we paid $18 billion for was probably only worth $4 billion. When it does this, it has to take that money out of those Goodwill assets. It writes them down, basically just erasing them from Goodwill and then out of the equity also to balance out the balance sheet. But then why this is so dangerous and why it means double digit stock losses when it happens is because that also means that the debt to equity ratio jumps, risking breaching some of the debt rules the company has, which could mean that the company defaults or has to raise cash fast. Higher debt ratios also mean higher interest rates and higher interest expense. And also lower assets means a lower company value. And you see this in massive stock losses when management finally comes clean. That write down by Teladoc was the largest in 2022 among S&P 500 companies and resulted in a stock plunging 40% in a single day. When Comcast took its $8.6 billion write down loss on its Sky deal, the shares had already fallen 38% by that point as market rumors spread that the acquisition was botched and would have to be written down. Now, the easiest way to find this red flag before it hits your portfolio is to compare that goodwill amount against the total assets. How much of the company's total assets is it saying that is in this shady, immeasurable source of value? As an example, we see some disturbingly high goodwill numbers in two very big stocks. First, Broadcom, ticker AVGO. If we look at the balance sheet, we see goodwill at $50 billion against total assets of just $73 billion. This immeasurable value is nearly 70% of the company's total assets. So Broadcom management is saying after years of buying every company in sight and paying tens of billions more for that market price, most of Broadcom's stock value, more than two thirds, is in that immeasurable premium they paid. We also see this in Oracle, ticker ORCL, more than 71 billion in Goodwill and other intangible assets against 136 billion in total assets. That's more than half of the company. Now there are a couple of points here to make before you rush out to sell your shares of Broadcom. First, sectors like tech are gonna have much more in that Goodwill as a percentage of total assets. Much of the value of these companies is that hard to measure idea of what the technology does. So, so you always wanna compare these percentages against other stocks in the same industry or in the same sector to see which are actually dangerously high. Also though, seeing just one of these red flags in a stock doesn't make it a bad investment. In fact, I still do like shares of Broadcom, especially on that potential for the VMware acquisition. These are red flags, warning signs, but not stop signs. The important point here is that you know how to spot these and use them in your analysis because avoiding the worst of these is gonna keep you from losing money and... Now, these red flags will help you decide which stocks to avoid. Deciding which stocks to buy is easy with some of the features on the Weeble app. 
I started using Webull years ago for its paper portfolio feature that lets you invest in stocks and test out your strategies before investing real money. The more I get to know the app, the more I like and use it for some of these other features. Within each stock, you're gonna see critical alerts on earnings along with key indicators like profitability and debt. You'll see the financial statements helping to spot the red flags that we're talking about today. Scroll down even further and Webull ranks the stocks against its peers in measures like return on equity, margin, and valuation. I start each day on the market overview tab to check out investor sentiment, market movers, and this heat map that makes visualizing the market easy. You can invest in stocks, options, and ETFs on Webull and pay no commissions for stock trading. The advanced charting tools and level two quotes are a must for traders and you're gonna earn 5% on your uninvested cash. Webull offers transfer reimbursement up to $100 if you transfer from another investing account. And right now, look for the link in the description below. Sign up and deposit any amount, and you're gonna receive up to 12 fractional shares of stock free with each share worth up to $3,000. There is a lot to like here besides that 5% return on your cash, the free shares, and the stock simulator. So make sure you check out the link below or just scan the QR code on the screen now. Our second red flag hits shares of meta platforms, the old Facebook, and is when a company's operating margin is falling over a three-year period or longer. Now this one is different from the accounting red flags, the ones in the list that uncover these financial shenanigans, but it's definitely a warning for a company Company's future. All you out there in the nation know the operating margin is one of my favorite measures of a company's profitability. This is the operating income, so what's left over after paying the cost of supplies, wages, marketing, all those core operating expenses, that divided by its revenue. It's the core measure of how well management is turning those sales into income. And what you want to see is something like Tesla. Here I've divided the operating profit or the operating income by that total revenue for the last four years to show you this operating margin. And you can see not only is Tesla booking massive revenue growth, but it's also getting more efficient at turning that revenue into income. In 2019, it only converted a third of a percent of its sales into that, those operating profits. Last year, it was 17% of sales. Now that doesn't mean Tesla is off the hook because I found one very big red flag in its financials that we're gonna look at later, but there are two warning signs here you need to look for in this operating margin. Now the big red flag is when that operating profitability is just decreasing over several years. We saw Meta's operating margin fell from 50% to just 34% in the years to 2019. And even as it has rebounded a little bit last year, Last year, it plunged 25%. And while the share price has jumped this year with that return to profitability, the stock plunged 63% last year on that drop in the operating margin. And Nation, we're not just looking for these red flags for the numbers, but what it actually says about a company. In Meta's case, expenses for that disastrous metaverse project were getting out of control and destroying profitability. When a company loses control of its costs, whether it's in wages or marketing or spending or something else, you're gonna see it here in this operating margin. You need to start asking questions like this, like is management letting those costs get out of control and is it going to take the stock lower? That is a red flag to get out fast. Now another red flag related to that profitability is when sales and marketing costs are growing faster than revenue. For this one, we'll use Verizon Communications, ticker VZ, a stock drawing investors in with a 7.5% dividend, but some serious danger lurking underneath. For this, we're going to be looking at the amount the company spends on what's called Selling, General, and Administrative, or SGNA, found here in the income statement. It's a big part of those operational costs and includes expenses for marketing and wages. And what we're looking for here is that year-over-year -year change compared to the revenue. So I've calculated the change each year in both of these and circled the years where the SGNA grew faster than sales, because basically where Verizon is spending more to get less. In six years in the last 10, the company saw its costs rise faster than its sales. We can also see in the last decade total, its revenue is only up 11%, while those selling general and administrative costs are up more than 17%. So again, the questions here you need to be asking, how long do you think this can go on for a company? How long can a company increase its marketing and other costs more than its revenue growth and not run into major financial trouble. Verizon has managed to continue those dividend increases, but only by taking on $70 billion in debt and has seen 30% of its stock price wiped out. Verizon now owes more than $162 billion in debt and pays $4.6 billion in interest expense a year, all because it's become less profitable over the last 10 years and that cash flow cannot support the dividend. The bill always comes due, folks, and one day Verizon investors are gonna wake up to a dividend cut and a 20% price decrease. We've still got two more red flags to highlight, including that one that's gonna catch Tesla, but 
Why go through all the trouble? Or why should you take the time to look for these warning signs on these? And I know it sounds like a question with an obvious answer, but investors just do not take the time to understand their stocks. In a 2023 digital investor survey, investors overwhelmingly admitted to getting their stock advice from Google and social media. In fact, more than six in 10 said they added stocks to their portfolio with less than an hour or no additional research after hearing about it in a video. Investors are not doing their research and have no idea what's in their portfolio. Nation, I've been investing for over 20 years and spent more than a decade as a professional analyst. I do the research on the stocks we talk about here on the channel, but when you hear investing advice here on YouTube or Facebook, or Reddit, wherever, you need to be doing your own research as well. You do not know if that YouTuber really knows what the hell he's talking about, if he did any research at all, or if he just looks smart because he rocks a bow tie. These five red flags are easy to find and will put you ahead of 90% of the investors out there. We're digging deeper into the red flags with this next one, declining earnings quality over three years. And this is one of the most important measures you can follow, but also one of the most often neglected by investors. Earnings quality measures a key difference in how a company reports their financials. Revenue and profits are reported on the income statement, a financial statement open to so many accounting gimmicks and cheats, it would make Bernie Madoff blush. Honestly, folks, we follow the income statement because it does show us some important trends, but never trust the income statement. It's like the income statement is a rival mob family. We'll do business with it, but you just can't trust it. Is that reference too old? But between booking revenue before it's paid to capitalizing costs instead of expensing it and all kinds of other accounting tricks that are only interesting to accounting nerds like myself, by the time you get down to the net income reported on the income statement, it's so unbelievable, it could share an apartment with Santa, the Easter Bunny, and Papa Smurf. Now compare this to the statement of cash flows, a record of the actual cash in and out of the company. Now, this isn't an immaculate conception when it comes to accounting shenanigans either, but it's a much truer look at the company's cash generation. And where this helps us measure a company's earnings quality is in the difference between these two financial reports. The statement of cash flows shows us cash flow from operations, that actual cash collected from the company's core business. Then you've got the income statement, which shows us net income, what management would like you to think is its profits. So the red flag here is when management is using all those accounting gimmicks in the book to make that net income look higher, but then that actual cash flow isn't all that great. Our example here is Northrop Grumman, ticker NOC, and I've pasted the two financial statements together. At the top here, you see the statement of cash flows with cash flow from operations or CFO. The lower half then shows the income statement with that net income for each year shown at the bottom. Northrop actually did a pretty good job reporting high quality earnings in the past. From 2018 through 2020, its cash flow from operations minus that net income was positive. In other words, the profits it was reporting to investors were a fair representation of the actual cash being generated. But then something's happened and NOC has gone over to the dark side in the last three years. From 2021 through the last 12 months, management is reporting profits billions of dollars above what it's actually collected in cash. Total here, they want you to believe that profits are $6.5 billion higher than what the business has actually collected. Now, there are some legit reasons why actual cash flow and net income might be different for a while, but when it goes on like this and that difference builds, it is a major red flag that investors need to watch out. More often than not, and this is something we're going to look at next, but the company is extending more credit to consumers. Its inventory is building up and it may have to restate lower those earnings that it reported, backing out all the accounting tricks they were using. Now I'll reveal that giant red flag on shares of both Microsoft and Tesla next, but I found one car stock that could be ready to race. In fact, it's my favorite turnaround stock right now, so make sure you check out the video here next. Now, I've saved one of the biggest red flags for last, rising receivables on the balance sheet. This one is so bad because management can use it to make the company appear like revenue is rising, exciting investors on growth only to pull the rug out under them into the future. I'll show you the example with Microsoft and Tesla, but understand companies often sell on credit rather than cash. When they do this, they book the revenue on the income statement, but then they also note it as a receivable on the balance sheet, money they're owed on that sale but not yet paid. And the problem here is because management is under so much pressure to keep showing that revenue growth, when times get tough, it can be tempting to extend more credit to buyers, even buyers that may not be able to pay. Management still gets to show that higher revenue, impress its investors, and can kick the can down the road and just hope the company eventually gets paid. When we look at Microsoft's revenue and that receivables growth over the last five years, we see two red flags that you're gonna to wanna to keep an eye on. If we look at 2020 and 2019, we see that revenue growth was typically well above receivables. 
So the company closed out more of its sales and extended less credit. In the last three years though, not only has that changed, but receivable growth has been higher in two of the three. So not only does it seem like Microsoft is changing its policy, extending more credit to customers instead of collecting immediately, but it is maybe going to overboard on that policy. So here you as the investor need to ask yourself, is Microsoft's new easy money policy the reason it's been able to book that faster revenue growth? Would it not be the growth stock impressing investors if it kept to its old policy? And more importantly, will it be able to collect that $48.6 billion in receivable that it's owed? Or is it going to have to take a write down of those assets? And here we know Elon loves to surprise with those strong revenue numbers, but is he doing it by extending more and more credit? We can see here in four of the last five years, receivables grew at a faster pace than revenue. Taken alone, it doesn't mean you shouldn't invest in Tesla, but it's definitely something you need to be watching for to make sure it doesn't get out of control. Get your free stocks when you start using the Webull app with the link below or click on the video to the right for my favorite turnaround stock right now, a stock that could rise 50% from here. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.